Today's webinar will be presented by Ron Joano Jr. and Joey Morsi of Formed Plastics. They are members and Ron is the chair of ARM's Process Optimization Committee. If this webinar is valuable to you today, I encourage you to join the committee. You can send me an email again at info at rotomolding.org or reply to any of the ARM news emails. Ron and Joey, take it away. Okay, thanks, Adam. Good morning, everyone. As Adam said, uh, my name is Ron Joano Jr. I'm the VP of Manufacturing for Form Plastics. I've been with the company for 39 long years. Uh, along with me today is Joey Morsi, who is one of our chief engineers here at Form Plastics. As a chairperson of the Process Optimization Committee, the committee and I decided to reach out to molders in the industry and ask them to share with us uh, examples of cooling or shrink fixes that they have made. We asked them to state what their goals were and what design considerations were used. We actually shared this with a select group in our last Rotoplast meeting in Chicago, and we felt it would be a great topic today to do a webinar on. What you're going to see today are some examples of very high-end fixturing and also some very basic fixturing that can be also as effective. Also, at the very end of our presentation, we're going to share with you some photos of some foaming fixtures that uh, Diversified Mold and Castings has shared with us. I'm sure as a molder you'll find this very interesting. And like Adam said, at the end of the presentation, we'll be happy to answer any questions. So why don't we get started? The first submission is from Form Plastics. The goal on this part was to be able to hold the dimensions on the four-hole pattern in the X and Y dimension, uh, because this part will later connect to a metal framed cart. We want the fixture to be rigid and adaptable to forming variations. Okay, we use a high grade of 5 8 birch plywood for this fixture, which we use for most of our fixtures. We put a steel tube on one side of the fixture and slotted the other side. The fixture was made to the correct size, but oversized on the slotted side. We made four identical fixtures. As you can see, we put the tube in each side of the two holes. And on the left-hand side, uh, what's hard to see is the holes are still visible on the right-hand side. Okay, you're not there yet, Joe. No, go back up. Sorry. Okay, we took our third and fourth fixture and placed the tubes in the right side, the slotted sides of the fixture over the left side tubes. So you can see now we have, we're sliding it over the holes now on there. Next one. So as the part shrinks, our, our modular slot fixture, you can see how it will stop when the tubes hit the end of the slots on the two left holes. We have now controlled the X dimension but we now need to control the Y dimension. So the X's are, are being held right now. You can see the tubes in both sides of the holes and how it stopped at that slot. Okay, so X is being held. Now we want to go to the Y side. We have now placed a fixture that fits in between the two X dimension fixtures. This fixture is typically loose when we put it in a hot part. As the hot part shrinks, all three fixtures move in unison together, enabling us to hold our desired dimension. This has been a very successful repeatable fixture for us. So you can see here as everything has shrunk, everything is tight now. So uh, when we do put this part in the metal tube frame, uh, everything fits really nicely. It wasn't very difficult to make, uh, wasn't very expensive to make, but it was very effective. Okay, next part. Next, uh, this part we're looking at is a side wall of a six foot tall cabinet. The goal was to maintain the same height on the right side wall as in the left side wall. We also had to maintain flatness and the contour of the bottom side. We machined our plywood to have an exact contour of the part on our five axis CNC machine. So you can see at the bottom right there um, where we had to make the contour exactly right going across. Okay, 